Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to present you our company, Revocrop, specialized in crop planning optimization. So, a special thanks to our teacher, Prof. Dr. Luis Felipe Lages and the greater Carlos Reis Marquez for introducing us to the value creation wheel framework. So meet the team. We are a group of five masters in management students at Nova SBE. Nowadays, climate change and unsustainable agricultural practices are polluting and reducing water levels for farmers in Andalusia, Spain, and thus reducing the quality of their crops. We, River Crop, provide earth observation solutions that allows you to effectively plan and manage crops and resources on our innovative platform. After launching our platform in March 2021, we expect a yearly revenue growth of 15%. Therefore, we require an initial investment of 150,000 euros in order to invest in agriculture experts, data scientists and R&D and offer you in exchange 10% of our company. So during this presentation, we will walk you through the five phases of the PCW, starting with the first phase where we present the context, market space, problem definition, and the KPIs that we set to ourselves at the beginning of the project. Second, uh, we will present the, the results of our brainstorming for solutions and filters. In the third phase, we select and rank those uh, ideas and those criteria. In the fourth phase, uh, we created the value creation funnels, both locally and globally, and created a prototype for our technology. And finally, in the fifth phase, we will present our marketing strategy and the three M's, also the business model. And we will finish with an evaluation of the KPIs, whether they were met or not. And we will finish by a wrap up. So let's start with the challenge. The market we're looking at is large end-user agricultural companies across the globe with water pollution and shortage issues on their farms. And the main challenge is to identify the most attractive geographical market for our startup to launch the Earth Observation Service Crop Planning Optimization. The aim is to improve farmers' crop efficiency overall and water and fertilizer usage and identify anomalies by applying top-notch technologies such as satellites, big data and machine learning. To answer this question, we identified five big whys and the main why is why are large end user companies in Andalusia, Spain facing water shortage and water pollution? But to answer this question, we needed to also ask deeper questions for example, why Andalusia specifically has low water reservoirs in the region? And researching this, we understood that 81.2% of the Andalusia's total water resources are consumed by agriculture. We also asked why is Andalusia's territory being designated to so-called nitrate vulnerable zones? Another question that we asked is why climate change is causing increasing temperature, less rainfall, supporting need for, non, for efficient water management. Again, these questions are specific to Andalusia. Finally, we asked why agricultural practices of farmers are not sustainable for the environment in that region. But the, the first thing that we did before reaching the end solution is identify certain KPIs. We identified business KPIs, technical KPIs, and our internal group uh, KPIs. So starting with the business KPI, the main um, idea is whether we achieved Um, before reaching the end solution, the first thing we did, we did at the start of our project is identifying uh, uh, the, uh, the key KPIs uh, for our project. So we identified business 
uh, KPIs, technical KPIs, and our internal uh, own internal group KPIs. For the business KPIs, the first thing is to achieve a realistic solution. We need to develop a realistic solution, and this can be measured by distributing, for example, a satisfaction survey um, for our clients after a few months of our business relationship. Second, whether our solution was able to achieve a positive return on investment and sustain a profitable business model. And this can be measured by looking later at our income statements and compare required resources in relation to project outcomes. Third, whether the solutions were purchased on a recurring basis, and this can be measured by analyzing individual customer profitability and loyalty, for example, the customer retention rate. For the technical KPIs, we divided them into short-term, mid-term, and long-term KPIs. Uh, the short-term is about having a percentage of large end-user companies who have used our farming practices. For example, if we reach out to 10 companies, we need uh, at least 50% of companies to be willing to use our technology. The mid-term KPI is about whether our services added value to clients in terms of the efficiency of agricultural practices, for example, by looking how it increased crop productivity, water quality, overall irrigation efficiency, etc. The long-term uh, KPI is to know how our technology helped um, achieve the proposed UN SDGs, uh, and this can be measured by looking at the overall efficiency increase. The same thing for our internal group work KPIs. We divided them into short-term, mid-term, and long-term. Uh, the short-term is about uh, how the team adhere to schedules, uh, how everyone contributed, uh, and the satisfaction of each one of us of the teamwork dynamics. And this can be measured by assessing, for example, time arrival, um, the specific content parts delivered by each one of us, and the final peer evaluation. In terms of mid-term KPIs, um, we, yeah, we have to see later whether we got in-depth uh, knowledge about the EO industry in terms of, for example, uh, understanding concepts and applying them to the respective business model. The long-term KPI would be uh, learning and understanding useful tools, uh, and this can be measured by um, our ability to replicate VCW in the future, for example, in our uh, career or future projects. We will now start by uh, the phase one of the VCW, which is discover value. Looking at the Earth observation industry, the main takeaway is that it has been growing significantly over the years, specifically 7% in 2020, and it's forecasted to grow by 13% in 2025. And the main drivers for this growth are research and new technologies. The main players in the industry are private companies and institutions processing EO data, and when we look at remote sensing to track and monitor, we found that it's mostly used by defense and intelligence, atmospheric conditions, land and agriculture, and marine. Still on the global agriculture industry, the following are some interesting numbers. In 2018, agriculture accounted for 4% of GDP worldwide, and about 28% of the population was employed within the sector. Agriculture accounts for 70% of water use and one over third of food produced globally is either lost or wasted. These numbers show the importance of reinventing agriculture in order to end extreme poverty, boost shared prosperity, feed growing population and meet climate goals. Earth observation allows this reinvention through acting as a decision tool for crop planning optimization. The goal from our startup is to provide a suitable healthy environment for plants, 
to grow by using technologies such as satellite imagery combined with big data machine learning and neural networks, which can be applied on different crop types while considering uh, some important factors such as location, atmosphere and the quality of soil. Our startup will directly deploy and implement the process of Earth observation, starting by collecting data using satellites and then processing this data into useful information using machine learning algorithms. On the third step, we use the complement products such as drones or sensors to support satellite data in order to deliver reliable information to our clients um, and also provide specific solutions and customizations to finally uh, our large end user um, companies who are our main targets can implement and use earth observation solutions in a practical way. So basically we offer three main services, vegetation indices with a focus on water consumption and disease warning, crop type classification, where we provide crop type info over a large spatial scale and productivity trend analysis, meaning that we help farmers determine crops with the highest productivity. We aim to be Europe's front runner in terms of interpreting earth observation data efficiently to large agriculture companies. Uh, the objective is to increase farmers' productivity, profitability, and sustainability. At the same time, we would be addressing key sustainable development goals through supporting crop planning, optimization, and water management. So why is earth observation relevant in this case? First, because our startup increases farm productivity and profitability by identifying patches of poor crop, crop growth. Second, we efficiently allocate scarce resources such as water and fertilizers, and the goal is to improve the profit and productivity of farmers. Third, we retain the soil productivity over the long term by assessing deficient or excess nutrients. Also, we create a database of crop types and crop performance history for optimal rotation, crop rotation cycles. Additionally, we can determine the best management practices when we estimate water usage. And finally, it is relevant because we can determine which crop to grow at a certain location and under certain conditions in order to obtain the highest yields. In order to provide a complete solution to our challenge, we need to address several SDGs. So first, by detecting crop diseases on time, our technology reduces the amount of poor harvest and increases the yearly harvest to feed the growing population. Secondly, our technology allows an efficient allocation of resources and reduces the amount of pesticide and water used on the field, which is beneficial for the environment and the life on land. Third, our technology tracks and estimates carbon fluxes more accurately in order to reduce the environmental impact of farming. And finally, through partnerships such as research institutes, individual researchers, the European Space Agency, etc., we aim for a responsible production and protection of the life on land. In addition to the previously mentioned services, we will have complement products to help provide a more reliable service to our customers. First, drones help to gain a closer perspective of fields that might not be sufficiently sharp on the EO images. Although EO images are already of high quality, so customers will probably not need drone images. Sensors can also be used as complements to our services as they can gather information about the soil state and composition as well as weather characteristics such as air, temperature and humidity. For instance, sensors can complement both the productivity trend analysis and the crop type classification services, making them even more accurate. Modems will also be used to transfer data between agriculture equipment and our web app in order to see where your machinery is at all times. This will help workers check the machinery's route and application rates and therefore identify the problem areas more quickly. 
Additionally, mobile apps will be free, easy to use, and can quickly process a high amount of data in real time. Finally, a team of agricultural specialists will analyze the data collected and derive meaning from it in order to provide consultancy and advisory services for customers. We were able to identify the main users of Earth Observation. So the main users are biotech companies, agrochemical industry, agricultural machinery, and farmers and large end user companies. And this is where our focus will lie. It is important to note, however, that the large end user companies that we are targeting need to fit in a certain profile. For instance, they have to be companies who have R&D capabilities in agriculture for them to, to be willing to use our service. They need to be focused in quality, um, also in growth and innovation strategy. They have to be looking for new customers and markets. And also it's very important for them to be interested in sustainable production and customer pro proximity. We have already identified a potential customer in Spain, more specifically in Andalusia, a company that possesses all the requirements previously mentioned. A Caesar is in fact a group of companies and brands within the olive and vegetable oil sector in Andalusia. It is one of the biggest olive oil producers in Spain with annual revenue around 524 million US dollars in 2019. They own more than 20 brands and they export to more than 80 countries worldwide, with exportation entails more than 35% of the company's production. Moving on uh, to the competitive market overview, well, the industry of the Earth observation is a fragmented industry as uh, there are many small independently owned players. It's a young industry where more and more startups and find-based ventures are, are emerging. Also, there had been an increase in the usage um, of free Sentinel Cop uh, Copernicus satellite data. Additionally, nowadays, the industry has become more characterized with specializations in particular fields, such as beehives, insurances, etc. To better understand the market and the relationships between different industry players and how these might affect our startup Revo Crop's success, we conducted the five forces of Porter. First, the threat of new entrants is considerably high. The low awareness and the high initial costs may hamper the growth of the market, but operation costs are diminishing over time. Overall, the EO market is growing due to technological advancements and especially because there is higher need for data in decision making. Also, the convergence of IT with agriculture coupled with government initiatives can be drivers for new entrants. We also found that barriers to entry vary from developing to developed countries and also within the regions like rural versus urban. For instance, the low awareness among farmers in the rural areas of developing countries towards the technology has resulted in the lower adoption of sensing and imagery technology for crop monitoring. On the other hand, the bargaining power of suppliers is considered low. Suppliers are increasingly looking to the agriculture sector to supply their services and materials. The number of suppliers is um, increasing and they are not concentrated and switching costs are low. In the long term, there is potential to decrease the supplier control if technology prices decline. The substantial investment required to develop automated equipment and the technology necessitates that the firms competing in this sector must achieve substantial economies of scale, which is why their bargaining power is significantly low. The investments required to produce equipment require significant time and substantial costs for regulatory approval. For bargaining power of buyers, it is fairly moderate Many agriculture companies have increased their market share in the crop monitoring market during the last decades, and it's due to the increasing use of high resolution imagery and EO data in agriculture to optimize farmers' activity. The recent success of precision farming in increasing is increasing the productivity of major crops 
and it is expected to open up new growth opportunities in the near future, meaning that the buyer can easily switch between competing firms. However, those technologies involve data collection of multiple years and therefore switching costs can be high. Regarding the threat of substitutes, um, traditional methods can be a substitute for using technology for crop planning and optimization, especially in farms with cheap labor. Farmers can monitor their yields manually, which costs less. However, the EU industry is rapidly evolving uh, and information generated from Earth observation is unique and only few other resources can deliver a similar value. And that's why the threat of substitute is considered low. Lastly, uh, rivalry among existing competitors seems to be high. The crop monitoring market is characterized by a high degree of competitive rivalry. Efforts to develop branded or specialized products are quickly and effectively copied and meaningful differentiation is difficult to achieve. It is also important to note that the global uh, crop monitoring technology in the precision farming market is expected to, registered, uh, to register a growth of 12.6%, which is um, considered high. In order to have uh, a better understanding of the bigger picture of the market, uh, the main players, our main competitors, what they offer that we don't and what we do offer that they don't, and to better understand the main added value that we bring to our customers, we map the players according to certain criteria that is most important in our startup. Um, and as you can see, Tremble uh, would be our main competitor in this competition landscape as they share with us most of these criteria and offerings. To have an overview of the macro environment of the Earth observation uh, sector, we carried out the pestle analysis. Uh, we started at looking at the social factors, and is, it is important to note that in 2016, 9.7 million people worked within agriculture in the European Union, and approximately 28% of the global population was employed um, in the agriculture industry in 2018. Uh, and also important to know and understand that agriculture has a direct impact on the SDGs, uh, namely the goal to zero hunger. So efficient crop planning allows for local, national and global actions to end hunger. For the political factors, uh, in the European Union, Copernicus as a European Information Services is based on Earth observation. Uh, second, the Earth observation in Europe on a local, national and European level, uh, level aims to provide a coherent picture of environmental changes. Regarding the economic factors, um, the main takeaways are, are that 37% of global landscape is used for agricultural purposes and approximately 11% used for growing crops. Secondly, agriculture sector contributes 6.4% of the world's economic uh, production is derived from agriculture. Regarding the environmental factor, the climate change is affecting agriculture. A part of the potential yield losses can be stopped by rotating crops to match water availability or using crop varieties that better suit changing conditions. Also, the agriculture sector is responsible for a significant share of greenhouse gas emissions, 17% uh, directly through agriculture activities and an additional 7 to 14% through changes in land use and it negatively affects pollution and degradation of soil, water and air. Regarding the technological factors, uh, the improvements in earth observation benefit agricultural processes, namely better accuracy of pictures, estimates of crop yields and differentiation between various crop types in order to support irrigation or identify anomalies. For the legal factors, uh, European Union's common agriculture policy accounts for about a third of the EU budget. The European space policy also aims to fight climate change and it conducts framework for space activities in Europe. 
To get deeper insights on market circumstances, we conducted SWOT analysis. One of the main strengths of the solution is the Sentinel-2 multispectral uh, instrument. It is not a high resolution, but multispectral instrument, thus being predestined for accurate crop monitoring. Geo-information can be generated and ultimately provided to the customer at local, regional, national and international levels. Another strength is our ability to address the problem of water shortage and pollution through crop maps, vegetation indices, crop productivity trends, which is not the main focus of our competitors. Another strength is that monitoring services are offered free of charge, subscription and payment plans are only available for related consulting services. Also, this business model allows us to reach a higher user density, ultimately resulting in more available data stored in the internal database, leading to the possibility of training the algorithm faster and improve the, the monitoring capabilities. Lastly, we consider the intuitive tool, app, and online platform that we offer as a strength because information can be assessed in real time. On the other side, our short uh, market experience has to be considered as our main weakness. It may only lead to a lack of reputation among consumers, but also to missing long-term data for the algorithm to make even more precise decisions. Also, the business is dependent on the supplier of the data, meaning the Sentinel-2, so it needs to be assessed as the business could someday be excluded from accessing Earth observation data. Additionally, technical language could discourage farmers, and as students we have no data science knowledge required to process large amounts of data. Now, regarding opportunities, we can exploit the existing communication gap between farmers, agriculture service providers, and raw EO data, knowing that there is a rising need for independent, reliable, and high-quality crop monitoring. One of the major opportuni opportunities of the solution lies in the relation to the, seven, uh, to the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is End Hunger. Um, to achieve uh, food security and improve nutrition and also promote sustainable agriculture. Additionally, we assume the COVID-19 pandemic uh, to function as a driver of digitization in the agricultural sector while increasing uh, involvement and in high subventions of governments to improve farming techniques and also to increase the usage of certain technologies. Um, and this increase in the usage of these technology will drive the adoption of crop mapping services worldwide. On the other hand, one main threat may be a low penetration of advanced agriculture technologies in developing countries, resulting in several barriers to the adoption, such as uh, unskilled farmers, low awareness and less techno savvy uh, farming models. There's also a risk of potential changes in regulations and policies, and the business model is not only subject to competition with other high-yield technologies, but, but also substitute technologies for mapping agricultural land. We understand the importance of involving different internal and external stakeholders in the VCW process. Uh, and we try to involve different uh, stakeholders from different backgrounds and expertise. Um, the stakeholders of interest uh, were mainly uh, suppliers, competitors, investors, employees, etc. And we try to map them according to their relevance and their power in the industry. Uh, obviously, farmers uh, and large end user companies who are our main target are the most relevant and uh, powerful ones. We try to reach out to those different stakeholders uh, by sending emails and after multiple contact attempts, one stakeholder expressed his interest and willingness to support the startup, Abdullah Ibrahim Zada. He's an expert and a practitioner in the field. He worked for the US National Security and Economic Prosperity, the USAID and led numerous national and international development projects. He's currently pursuing a master in agricultural economics and the University of Arkansas. 
and he provided the, us with valuable insight, especially when it comes to ranking the most important filters. Moving on to phase two, the purpose is to find solutions and filters that will help determining the most suitable location for a market entry. On the next few slides, we will show the solutions and filters found based on our team's brainstorming and individual research. First, let's take a look at the ideas and solutions induced. Regarding our solutions, we didn't find any evidence or reasons that would make us narrow our possible solutions. Therefore, to not exclude any possibilities, we decided to consider all of 193 countries recognized by the United Nations. Now, let's move on and take a look at the criteria and filters we came up with. For our filters induction, every team member did some research on the area in order to find what filters could be important to our process. Additionally, we sent emails to possible stakeholders so that we could gather as much insight as possible on what filters could be valuable for us to use. After all this investigation, we came up with 49 filters, which we will see on the next two slides. These filters are divided on eight different categories depending on their nature, such as agriculture and socio-economic factors. Here we can see all the filters related to these four categories. Unsurprisingly, we gathered a higher number of agricultural filters once our company is providing agricultural services. Therefore, to measure the country's potential and current situation on this area, we gathered as much agricultural filters as possible which we consider being extremely important to choose the right country at the end. Here we can see the remaining filters we gathered. Like agriculture, there is also a greater amount of socio-economic filters, once it is also very important to measure the economic conditions of the countries we are considering entering with our services. On phase 3, we will select only relevant filters for our analysis by applying the poker method and involving stakeholders in order to rank filters efficiently. At the beginning of phase 3, we will present you the solutions. As said before, we will consider all the countries recognized by the United Nations to our solutions. This way, we will keep open-minded throughout the whole project. Now, we will evaluate each filter and select the ones we think are the most important for our analysis. Now that we had gathered 49 filters, each member of the team applied the poker method so that at the end we could better decide which filters to multiply, keep, review or kill. On this slide we can look at the filters the team decided to multiply to better fit our target clients. Therefore we adjusted our filter thresholds to help us reach the best country once we apply the value creation funnel on phase 4. After applying the poker method and discussing each filter together, the team decided to keep these filters as they were considered to be important on our analysis. On some cases, the team felt the need for further investigation regarding some filters, in order to decide whether some filters are important for our analysis or not. For this reason, these were the filters to be reviewed. At the end, we decided to merge a few filters into one that could better fit our necessities. For example, merging the company and technology filters into Digital Adoption Index. With this filter, we would better measure the openness to our technology on every country. Here we can see the filters considered to be irrelevant, unclear or to which we couldn't find any information on. Therefore, we decided to kill them and not use them on our analysis. To finalize our phase 3, the team decided with stakeholders on the degree of importance of the filters we kept. On this phase, we will rank the filters to use them later in phase 4 and find the country we will be targeting. To rank the global filters, we kept in mind the startup service offering and target market. First, to assess how much an earth observation service could potentially be needed in the country, we rank the crop production index above 90 as the most important. The higher the index, the greater the need for our service. Second, we place the GDP per capita above 18,000 to identify which countries possess large end agriculture companies as we assume that they are located in countries with higher GDP index. Third, we rank the use of chemicals and fertilizers as it is a good indicator for the countries with the most arable land and also to countries with the biggest farms, 
given that the use of fertilizer is more commonly used on pig farms. Fourth, we rank this filter to measure the political stability on countries, once we consider that it is very important for a startup like us to enter countries with a stable political condition. Fifth, we place the SDG's performance score above 70 in order to reach countries that are more committed to meet these goals and therefore are more likely to work with us as we are also committed to sustainable and development goals as mentioned before. These are the filters we consider to be the most important. Nevertheless, we still consider the remaining five filters to be relevant while deciding between a few countries that fulfill other requirements of the top ranked filters. Regarding the local filters ranking, we ranked the crop production per region above 2000 first for the same reasons as we did for the global filters. Second, we ranked the water stress index above 3 to find regions that are very affected by water shortage. By doing so, we are trying to reach regions where our crop planning Phase 4A aims to apply the previously ranked global and local filters to finally identify the regional solution that holds the highest potential for our business. The rationale behind our value creation funnel was to find a region that will most likely benefit from our technology while still entering a profitable market. We first applied 10 global filters which led us to Spain as our target country. After that, we applied seven local filters, which in the end led us to the region of Andalusia. As just mentioned, we ended up with our target market being Spain for immediate expansion. This decision was supported by the alignment of the value creation funnel with the MCDA method, as both indicated the same solution. Interesting to see is that not only Spain, but also Germany and the United States were three possible solutions until the very last filter. Only the high water stress index above three could select Spain as the winning country. On a global level, filters were alternating between agriculture, political, social and technological related topics. This way, we tried to achieve a balanced result that would take into consideration different points of views. Afterwards, seven local filters were applied in order to identify the most attractive region within Spain and indicated Andalusia as our most favorable region to expand to. Again, this value creation funnel decision was in alignment with the MCDA method, thus confirming the ranking and the correct application of local filters. It can be seen that the final decision for Andalusia has been made between Andalusia and Extremadura on the basis of which region region is home to more large agriculture companies, an important indicator for the profitability of the selected region. I want to point out that the alternation approach was not continued on a local level because we considered that previous global, political, social and technological findings were consistent among the different regions of our target country, Spain. As a result, only agriculture related filters were applied on a local level. In the next step, the goal of phase 4b was to develop a concept and prototype for our delivered services. To start off, a detailed overview over Andalusia's agriculture industry helps to develop a better understanding for the region and potential customers. With an area of approximately 87,000 square kilometers, Andalusia is the second largest region in Europe. Its regional GDP makes up for almost 10% of Spain's total and 32% of Andalusia's population lives in rural areas. 
Moreover, the region is characterized by its diverse farming systems. Following the diverse farming system, this slide aims to give an overview over Andalusia's agriculture. First of all, 4.5% of Andalusia's total GDP is produced by the agriculture sector, making it the most important region in Spain for food industry-related jobs and income. Additionally, 20,000 companies are engaged in the agriculture industry and offer various opportunities for our service. We can also see that agriculture is the most important employment sector and accounts for a share of over 20% of Andalusia's total employment. Andalusia's crop production has a volume of 82% of the total value derived from agriculture. The five crops that take up most of the region's cultivated land are olives, cotton, wheat, sunflowers and almonds, while olives contribute the highest to the final production. In 2016, almost 40% of the world's total olive oil production was derived in Andalusia. We then took a look at the agri-food and R&D infrastructure of the region. Andalusia is the home of multiple agri-food innovation and technology centers that support innovative companies specialized in food products, which supports the modernization of the agriculture industry. A special focus should be paid to the Technova Technology Center for auxiliary agriculture industry as a possible partner with regards to R&D. They promote innovation and technological development with the goal of adding value to companies in agriculture and currently offer services in the greenhouse sector that focus on new techniques for optimizing resources like water and the development of algorithms for agriculture. We believe that their expertise holds high potential for the development and implementation of our service and that we could make use out of their relationships, knowledge, and existing infrastructure. Additionally, we wanted to gain insights on which big agri-food players operate business in the area. So this slide aims to give you a quick overview of found companies. Companies that are probably most known among us today are Bufrost and Kraft Foods. We see Sovena as our main potential customer in the region. This is because the company holds huge olive oil plantations in Andalusia and the production and farming of olives requires subsequent amounts of water, which is why they may struggle with water shortage. After concluding that Andalusia holds high potential for our startup, we wanted to identify the pain points of the agriculture business there. So first of all, the climate at Andalusia is generally mild, but with very hot and dry summers. So more than 64% of Andalusia's agriculture production are derived from irrigation and around 80% of the region's total water resources are consumed by agriculture. It is therefore surprising that approximately 47% of Andalusia's water resources are derived from overexploited aquifers. Moreover, water pollution caused by runoff crops led to 18% of Andalusia's territory being designated to nitrate vulnerable zones. As a result, we concluded that new ways to manage water supplies are necessary to cope with those challenges and hold high potential for us, as Andalusia must step up on its efforts to minimize climate change impacts on the area and the water resources. This leads us to our STP concept, which I will walk you through now. The segmentation of potential customers was based on geographical and firmographical markets. The geographical market was previously defined by the value creation funnel. The firmographical market is defined by large agriculture companies, and in the beginning, no final specification on their crop production was made. The behavioral segmentation identified companies that want to improve agriculture and may, but not necessarily have to, whole capabilities in research and development. A more concentrated look on the market finally identified large agriculture companies that focus on crop production with extensive water usage and therefore may struggle with water shortage as a target. Our company Revo Crop will therefore be positioned as a firm that offers the best combination of technical expertise and affordable pricing with the aim to empower customers to contribute to the UN SDGs. It is a solution for large farming companies looking to improve their water resource management 
and to increase their crop and especially olive oil yields because of the importance of water management and crop production. FeboCrop was created as a platform to help farmers make more reliable, data-driven decisions. As a result, FeboCrop will be embedded very much downstream, fairly close to end users in the earth observation value chain. In order to identify problems as they emerge, high-resolution imagery is used to monitor crop health. Thus, our company provides four key consultancy services for farmers on a pay basis. First, assessment of vegetation indices and crop water demand. Second, estimation of crop water requirements and overall water quality. Third, optimization of input application. And finally, crop type classification. In this slide, I want to give you a quick overview over our subscription models and customers will have three different options to choose from. They not only differ in price, but update frequency, number of created polygons per month and the technical data that is provided in the received reports. Additionally, customized advisory will be included in the premium version. As I just mentioned, the services prototype is based on three different subscription models. A free one with access to basic satellite images and a standard and premium one for up-to-date and high-quality information. To get into more detail, the premium user interface will allow consumers to select their location and retrieve information about things like the sowing rate, fertilizer usage, weather, field data and water management. It will be possible to save notes and share among colleagues and enter reports with discovered findings, recommendations, and pain in action points. Additionally, the interface will offer 24-7 assistance via chats with exports and also FAQs. Moreover, the online platform will be supported by a mobile app to ease access for clients wherever they are. This holds an advantage regarding time and money over traditional field visits.